Day Strategic Management Class of 2017. My name is Nathan and I'll be presenting to you today my final assignment for the class. This assignment is going to cover two specific categories, namely team participation and leadership. For team participation, I'm going to provide you with my big tip for improving collaboration and also give an analysis of some of the broader lessons I've learned regarding teamwork. Uh, for this section, I'm going to draw heavily on my experience from assignment three. This was a strategic analysis conducted on Kogan.com and I completed it with my two lovely teammates, Anne-Marie and Neha. For the second section, we'll take a look at leadership and consider at what points in the strategic management process a leader can have the most impact. As we'll see, leadership doesn't end with the creation of vision and mission statements. It continues on as the strategy is implemented, with the latter often being a bigger determinant for success than the efficacy of the strategy itself. So at what points can a leader make the most significant contributions to the strategic management process? Well, let's start with the model provided by Thompson et al. Their framework identifies five key tasks to be undertaken by leaders. For a secondary perspective, I've overlaid on top of that the opinions of David Petraeus, commander of the United States and NATO forces in Iraq and Afghanistan from 2008. He outlines four tasks, which when executed set the azimuth or direction of the organization. The first area of significant contribution for leaders is to get the big ideas right. This aligns with tasks one to three in Thompson et al's model. Task one is determining the strategic vision, mission, and core values of the organization. And while the leader needs to take inputs from all levels, particularly employees on the front line, the final decision on what the vision needs to be rests with the leader. Change is not always the best strategy either. As Goss, Pascal and Athos outline, a leader must make sure the old way of doing things are redundant, indeed dangerous, before embarking on the costly process of change. Tasks two and three relate to breaking down the high level vision into manageable objectives. Once again, the leadership team is responsible for finalizing these objectives but does so through close consultation with managers whose KPIs will be closely aligned with delivering and implementing those objectives. The second area of contribution for leaders is in communicating the big ideas. The AGSM Unit 12 notes tell us that strategies can only succeed if they move out of the mind of the strategists and are turned into actions. Therefore, communication really enables implementation of the strategy, and this should be both up and down the chain. For example, Petraeus would hold weekly meetings with the President of the United States every Monday morning at 7.30 a.m. sharp. These will go for one hour and the meeting was never late and nor did it run over time. Communication of the revised mission statement commenced right up front with Petraeus writing a letter to all personnel at all levels of the organization within days of taking the leadership position. Communication from the front lines was also an important factor and achieved through battlefield updates and analysis called BUA on a daily basis. In the discipline of getting things done, author Martin outlines that strategies most often fail because they aren't well executed. Ensuring the proper execution is covered by task four and five, which is where the rubber hits the road. Leaders should provide training of managers and lead by example. Managers should know what their roles and responsibilities are and what success looks like. Finally, sufficient personnel, capabilities and resources need to be provided. Also a part of this process, leaders need to collect and analyze data to track the progress of the organization towards its mission. This is covered by task five. In Iraq, this included measuring every element of its political progress, its social progress, and its basic service provision. Hospitals, schools, rule of law, you name it, says Petraeus, we had to track it. And this was in addition to all the normal military measures. The final task that leaders should contribute to is fostering the formation of a learning organization, facilitating actions that ensure lessons are identified and shared with some concrete or tangible action being taken, such as the revision to a mission statement, change of a policy, or update to a procedure or manual, before considering the lesson as being learnt. Moving on to team participation. My single biggest takeaway to improve team collaboration is to ensure that goals are set after each meeting and that they are smart. For our assignment, this would mean we would not leave class until we had set goals for the next week. These goals were always specific and measurable, with each team member being given a certain task to research or write up with the number of words specified. To ensure they were attainable and relevant, we would base the goal on the marking criteria as found in the assignment guideline and they were always time bound with a specific deliverable date being given. It is interesting to note that this takeaway was also identified by Nielsen et al in their study of the 17 fundamental traits of organizational effectiveness as having the highest correlation with successful organizations. In my experience with our assignment, this makes sense because each person knew and trusted on the other team members to deliver their section. It allowed us to split the assignment cleanly into thirds, thus greatly reducing the overall workload. An analysis of my strengths and weaknesses highlighted my strong domain knowledge on delivery issues and technology as a key strength. To play to this strength, we decided that I would take the role of reviewing the recommendations section of the report so that I could fact check and add small technical additions to give the section more weight. My key weakness was definitely my limited in-person availability due to prior overseas commitments. This was addressed in two ways. 
first, during the storming stages of group formation, as described by Bruce Tuckerman, I made a conscious decision to let others take a stronger leadership role. I knew that this would prove useful as time critical decisions would need to be made, which would be difficult while I was in a different time zone. Secondly, I ensured I got all team members' contact details and added them to a WhatsApp group as soon as possible, so that we could all seamlessly communicate in a group forum regardless of our location. Thus, we were able to successfully avoid two of the silent killers of strategy, as described by Beer and Eisenstadt.